Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you can be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And available wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and a little notify bell next to it to make sure you always get your new Going In Raw notifications. Yeah. We're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Even during the Royal Rumble itself, Larson, we got ourselves a couple new patrons. Oh, we got quite a few, in fact. And uh, I'll go ahead and give them some shout outs. Yes, please. Real quick. We've had Josh Sayer, Thank Austin you. Laws. Thank you. Billy Gibson. Thank you. Marvin McGee Jr. Thank you. Josh, Michael Noel. Thank you. And Donovan K. Peterson. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for your support. We Thank definitely you so much. appreciate it. Quick note also, we've got Friendo Club shirt sticker packs are back in stock at friendomarket.com. Mm-hmm. You can get them right now, um, but they might go quick. They might. So get the move get on, on it. for that. Get to stepping. Uh, this was a really, really, really good Royal Rumble, man. It was a really fun show, top to bottom. I don't think there was a dud match at all. I don't think there was a stinker. Let me go ahead and take a no, look here. I don't think so. Let me bring your so. notes up right here. I don't think so. And see what we no, can find. No, Rumble match was both fun for the most part. Yeah, no, I thought they were fun. This is the best Fiend match. You you think oh, it's the best. It's uh, Bray's b- best match ever, I feel like. Bray one Wyatt match. match. Yeah. I mean, you could say the Wyatt Family versus Shield tag match, Elimination Chamber a few years back. Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt in the cage. That was a decent yeah. one. But again, Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, there there really wasn't anything to be too upset about. Um, even the, the Brock-heavy rumble, which saw him tie the record for most eliminations. It was all going to be about the payoff. Who was going to eliminate him? Um, yeah. We had heard that Cain uh, Velasquez was in contention. And given what happened in, during their match at Crown Royal, where Brock beat him about two minutes, uh, didn't really feel like that a rematch it was necessary, especially uh, having Kane be the one to eliminate Brock from the Rumble when someone else could have really used that rub. I really wish they would call it Crown Royal. Was that what I say? Yeah. Crown Jewel. That'd be, that'd be rad. Crown Royal presents. I guess I got whiskey on the mind. Crown Royal. <laughs> um, uh, instead, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. He eliminated Brock. He won Royal Rumble. Uh, awesome, awesome moment. Yeah, it was great. Uh, the man who was once anointed by Vince himself as yeah, a chosen, chosen one, one. now uh, is on the verge of, of toppling uh, Brock Lesnar, yeah. maybe, at WrestleMania this year. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I, re- I really hope that happens. Me too. I really hope that happens. Mm, me too. I get the feeling that... I get the feeling that they're just going to do the thing where Drew loses and... Fairly sure. I mean, they'll probably give Drew like a really good fighting chance. I don't know. I don't know. Like two years ago, I would have said, yeah. But last year, Seth beat Brock clean, kind of. I mean, he kicked him in the, in the front area a few times. No yeah. less. He was a one, two, three pin. I know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll get to that. We'll get to that more down the line now that we're on the road to WrestleMania, even though we've got two fairly prominent pit stops. We've got Elimination Chamber. And, and Super Showdown. Super Show. Yeah, Super Showdown, which they do make a big deal about. The Crown Royal Show. Crown Royal, yes. Crown Royal Super Showdown. Um, but no, like you said, it was a good, it was, yeah, it was both, a good show. Both Rumbles were fun. We're um, waiting to find out right now who the actual Iron Man was. Yes. Because if that ends up being Brock Lesnar, you will have won prediction. Well, I won anyway because Shayna tied with Bianca for most eliminations. That's a half point. You can't and a half tie 30. for the most something. In fact, you can't. Okay, did, did Shayna eliminate more people than anybody else? Save for Bianca then, Belair. Then, she, then if you can't say here's yes, if you can't say yes, then you no, don't here's get. The thing. Here's the thing. Before, I think, the, the women's match, we discussed it. And you were like, oh, yeah, you can have the half point. Yeah, no, but I thought about it when I was on the verge you of can. losing. Yeah, exactly. You're on the and verge of losing, and that's when you backtrack. And you can't do so that. What's wrong with that? That's called, I can do that. I just that's called that. being chicken shit. I just did that. It's called being chicken shit. Well, you can call it whatever you want. You can, you, you can use rude. See, here's the thing. You if, can use rude names if, all you want. If the tables were turned, be like, hey, I lost. Well, you'd be a sucker then. No, I'd be That's a good what sport. You would be. I would give, this whole ruse about the belts has deprived me of giving me the W's that I earned being better than you at predictions. I was I better than you word. Th- yesterday at yeah, Worlds yesterday, Collide. Worlds, uh, Wrestle Kingdom, I was best. Yeah. Royal Rumble today, looks like I'm best. I mean, so, I don't know what to tell you, man. 
It, did, did, did Shayna get more eliminations than anybody else? No, she didn't. So you don't she win tied. that point. She tied. She, there she is tied. no tie. There is no tie. Did she get There's more? There's literally a tie. They had the same number of elimination. By definition, that's a tie. Anyways, the people don't want to hear us argue. Let's get to the breakdown of the show, please. If you insist. Uh, kickoff show began with uh, Sheamus versus Shorty G. Shorty G came out in purple and that gold. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, of course, obviously, like we all know, uh, Kobe Bryant uh, died yeah. today. In a, yeah, sadly uh, passed away today in a, that was, a, a, a helicopter crash. No, that that's awful. That's it's still very surreal. Yeah, it's very as both big basketball guys, you and I are mm -hmm. being around for you know uh, Kobe's entire career basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very it's very bizarre and very tragic. His mm -hmm. daughter was with him and mm -hmm. seven other people. Uh, so, anyways, uh, that was you know one tribute, and then of course later on they uh, the WWE you know Michael Cole and Corey Graves officially did like a, a you know in memoriam thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyways, this was a fun match. Um, you know, Sheamus versus Shorty G. I wasn't huge on this match even existing. Yeah. Uh, but now that I think about it, I guess I'd rather have a match like this in the kickoff show than have these two go at it in the Rumble. Yeah. Because there's was... plenty of other interesting stories that happened in the Rumble, actually. There's also, we should we should actually lead off this little bit of news, too, although I guess we could save it for the news brief tomorrow. According to Pro Wrestling Sheet, uh, Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle did have an encounter of sorts backstage. Apparently Lesnar had some uh, choice words for Matt Riddle. He said, don't mess with me or something like well, that. Well, I guess he was like, hey, uh, I need he you. He tried to big dog him, I guess. You need to understand the situation. I'm sure cameras were there to capture it all. Um, and uh, uh, like something like Riddle uh, understood what Brock was talking about or something like that. Like, I don't understand why people take uh, Matt Riddle, what he says so personally. Like Goldberg, I guess I can kind of understand because he's Matt Riddle said countless times that Bill Goldberg is a terrible wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> I get yeah, right. that, but he's like, never really said that about Brock. No, he just says he wants to retire. He Brock wants to retire. Brock I, shouldn't shouldn't your main goal if you're a wrestler, you know, you always claim your main goal should be uh, be champion, right? Be the best, yeah. Be the best, right? Be top dog, yeah. be top champion. Yeah. What better way to say I want to be top dog than I want to retire? Basically, the Bruno of our era. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's I think that's what you should. I think. Yeah. No. I. I mean, I, I. If I were Brock, I would view everything Riddle says as a compliment. It's like I'm the I'm the top of the mountain right now in the wrestling world. I Brock Lesnar, Riddle's gunning for me, yeah, because uh, he knows that if if he bests me, yeah, he's top dog now, yeah. I mean, Riddle is, is more or less saying, Brock, you're number one. Is, is I there, want to be so number one. Let, let's tell me, let me ask this: If Drake Maverick was going around saying this, do you think Brock would have ever wasted his breath? Not a second. Is there an element of I feel kind of threatened by this guy? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I figure. I think that's kind of what it is for both uh, old Bill and Brock. Mm -hmm. is, uh, there's a certain level of threat they view in Matt Riddle because he's young. He's really good. He's really good. He knows how to promote himself. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he's legit. Super over with the crowd. And on top of that, he is legit. Like, he could totally be the face of the company. Anyway, Sheamus won this particular match with yeah, a not, road uh, kick. But uh, not before uh, Shorty G's ear exploded. It exploded. <laughs> it did. We're watching the match and suddenly he's like, why is Sheamus bleeding from his forehead? That's there. not his blood. That's ear blood from Shorty G. There were two particularly heinous head wounds in I, this. Oh, uh, man. That I, Beth I, Phoenix, back of her skull. pouring out. It was, there was a lot of I'm it. I'm waiting for the picture on .com where she's getting stitches in the back of it's her head. Black and white, man. We need to colorize that for news brief. That was really, really gory. Anyways, uh, you mentioned... Uh, uh, Shorty G uh, wearing the purple and gold. Um, you yeah, know, we don't need to. Do, yeah. we, this is a kickoff match. Well, let's go through the simple. Like we early on, do I don't get why Sheamus was doing joint manipulation. He's slowing it down. We know you talked about it. I think you're right. He, he probably is slowing it down. Slowing it down. He looked like he lost his breath pretty early in this match, too. Yeah. There's nothing that nothing can compensate for being in, in a match, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In terms yeah. of, you know, practicing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but, totally. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Sheamus tries for a couple bro kicks, uh, misses him at first. Uh, and then at the end, Gable rolls up. Sheamus with the crucifix. Sheamus kicks out. Bang! Bro kick Hits for the win. One. Yeah, and that's all he needs. But yeah, it was a fun match. Yeah, it was fun. It was. It got. Shorty it got, G's a good wrestler. It got fun once Shorty G started getting some offense in. Yeah, sure. Because he works fast. Umberto Carrillo versus Andrade. Somebody in comments at some point said that I'm pronouncing it with an H. I've never pronounced Umberto with an H. It's, yeah. It's. I mean, I know it's spelled that way, but it's not pronounced that way. Yeah. Umberto Carrillo. It's probably me. Oh. I'm probably saying Umberto. Well, it's fine. My fault. Whatever. Y'all start a podcast uh, versus Andrade. What? No, I'm saying I was playing. I'm in the wrong. I mean, if I'm spelling it, saying it with an H, I'm, I'm yeah, incorrect. I'm defending him. Like, who cares? Oh, it doesn't right. matter. Let the guy pronounce it. Whoever wants to freaking pronounce it. He ain't the predictions champion, but I'll damn well defend him otherwise. 
They can't. I can fuck with you. They can't fuck with you. Oh, that's where it is. <laughs> that's where you draw the line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can have this long, multi-week, protracted uh, fuck with Larson scheme. <laughs> So well, someone, hopefully multi-month. Are you kidding me? And then one person uh, incorrectly says you're pronouncing someone's name wrong. <laughs> oh, and I well, cop says, it's probably me. No, and you're, you're like, mm, you're, no, you're out of line there, buddy. Oh, that right. Out of line. This is a fun match. Though. This was fun. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I have a feeling this might continue mm-hmm. because in WWE Universe, if you win by a roll-up, it's not a conclusive, uh, 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 you know, like definite victory. True. And that's how Andrade won. Expect a rematch on Raw tomorrow. That might be better than this match. Mm-hmm. This feels like the match that the rematch on Raw the next night will be better than. Yeah. yeah. Um, nonetheless, fun match. Uh, it feels like these guys can probably uh, bring a whole lot more. Um, this is one of those tip of the iceberg type matches, I feel like. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, man. I'd, I'd, like, I w- I'd love for this to be... Uh... You know, Ray versus Andrade, mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. two, where they just do a bunch of these. Hopefully, if they pull this off right, Andrade will retain the title throughout the feud. They'll build up Umberto well enough mm-hmm. uh, so he won't get buried after losing this feud. Yeah. Because um, that's, 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 the, that's the chance. Mm-hmm. That's, there, there's a pretty good chance that uh, Umberto uh, uh, will lose this feud and then just kind of disappear. Like yeah, Cedric Alexander I know, I know. did when AJ was U.S. champion. Umberto keeps on like sort of showing. Like every time I think he's going to get buried again, he just shows up again. So I'm hoping that this is like a long term plan for him. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you know Andrade will really put him through the motions, and we'll mm-hmm. get like a several month thing where they come back. It, it doesn't have to be like solid six months or a year of them going at it. Just they need to come back around. Yeah, Umberto, Umberto needs to pick up some wins, not on main event on Raw. Yeah, yeah, and then come back around to it at a certain point. Have exactly. him win the uh, Battle Royal. The WrestleMania Andre the Giant battle mm-hmm. royal. Mm-hmm. Have him do that. Mm-hmm. They'll probably be a battle royal at. Uh, I think they'll do a battle royal at Crown Royal. <laughs> and they'll have the uh, the greatest Crown Royal. Yeah, the greatest Crown Royal <laughs> battle royal. <laughs> yeah, man, what a bummer. We don't do the gaming stream anymore. We could, we could have called it Crown, Crown royal. royal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never know. Well, I guess if we do any sort of stream for, I guess they're calling it Super Showdown. We can just dub it Crown Royal. You know what we should do? We should play video games while we're watching it. There's always a distinct possibility. Let's have interdimension tension during Crown Royal. There, there you go. We'll just call it interdimension tension to Crown Royal. Crown Royal. Anyways, Andrade wins with a roll up. Uh, like I said, expect to see the rematch on Raw tomorrow. Yeah, that's good I'd stuff. I'd be pretty shocked if we didn't. Uh, next, main card starts with Big Dog. Damn it. Damn uh, it. Roman Reigns taking on Baron Corbin in a Falls Count dang, Anywhere dang. bout. Uh, started slow. In fact, I thought this Falls Count Anywhere bout was going to end up uh, having the fall count in the middle of the ring. Because yeah. that's where the action was focused. That's that's where they were the entire time. Yeah. Well, for the yeah for the initial uh, bit of it. Uh, however, they did eventually make their way uh, into the ringside area. So whoever decides to update the times is, is taking their damn time with it. And no, I know. I agree. Sometimes that stuff's up immediately. Yeah, I know. Sometimes they're like crazy fast with it. Yeah. Uh, was there? Is there a wait? Is is Broken Skull Sessions with Hitman on tonight? No, they haven't advertised that at no, all. No, we were watching whatever was on afterwards. It wasn't I wasn't paying attention. There's like a bunch of chronicles that are coming up, I think, yeah. in 24s and stuff. Yeah. So I don't uh, know. Anyways, this was, a, this was a fun enough match. Uh, they start brawling ringside. Um, Baron takes the ring. Uh, sorry, yeah, Baron takes the ring steps to Roman. Clears off the announce table. Roman starts to come back. They start brawling through the crowd. They come back to the timekeeper area. Baron grabs a ring bell, hit Roman with it, choke slams him on the German announce table. Baron covers, only gets two. Uh, Roman goes for a Superman punch. Baron catches him, choke slams him through announce table. Uh, and then uh, Corbin leads Roman back through the crowd, maintains the advantage while they're brawling up around the tech area mm-hmm. until Roman's, Roman Samoa drops him into a table, picks him up, and does it again. Yeah. Gets a two count. Uh, and then they brawl up to the elevated tech area, and Dolph and Bob Roode. Uh, interfere. They start attacking Reigns. They're trying to handcuff him to uh, uh, like the banister on the stairs leading up the tech area. Usos come out to make the save. Dolph and Bob Roode fight them off. And then they set up a guardrail atop two road cases mm-hmm. below where the tech area is at. And they're about to put Jay Uso through that. And then Jimmy jumps from tech area down to them below. It was a really cool spot too because the camera didn't go up to see him jump. He you just, just see him fall from top of He just fell through, yeah, into the frame. It was but pretty they cool. They cut to a different angle in the replay and you see him from uh, above tech area. It was great. Um, so Jimmy takes them out. Uh, let me find, uh, oh, there he goes. 
And then Roman ends up slamming him into the guardrail. Mm-hmm. Roman comes down. He Superman punches Corbin. They start brawling. They make the way towards the porta potties. Yeah. Uh, Roman slams Baron's head in the door and then puts him in the crapper. <laughs> and then dumps it over with yeah, relative ease. That was well. It, it was on wheels. It was on casters. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was a missed opportunity for like blue chemical. There was no blue stuff. And poo poo or pee pee. At the least, if you're putting a porta potty, you should be covered in blue stuff. Right. That's exactly correct. You know. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't no doo doo. At least when Kevin Owens was was in the porta potty, he came out with blue stuff. Yeah, I know exactly. Braun. It's very effective because everybody knows the dirty. Everybody blue knows stuff. blue stuff exactly. Uh, so Roman makes his way out of the porta potty. Uh, they're brawling towards the dugout area. Uh, they're brawling on top of there. Uh, Baron gets a chair, hits Reigns with it a couple times. Uh, Roman eventually fights him off, hits a spear atop the dugout to get the W. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So confirm big dog. not winning the Rumble since he won this match. I don't know where. I mean, look, I, obviously that took play. That happened, but. It was apparent, according to Tom Callahan, this was a very late decision to have Drew win. They were going with Roman that entire time. And then I wonder if the same thing was true with Shayna and Charlotte. That was a late call, too. That had to have been given that. Look, I mean, I know the betting odds aren't as as accurate as they used to be, but the fact that she was in it and in a prime position to win in a prime position to win. And then at the last minute, uh, they decided not to go that route. Um, I kind of feel I mean, I don't know. I have all the faith in Shayna that she can be a big player. The Charlotte win is a safer bet. We'll get there when we get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we'll it, get there it is like the there. safest bet. It is. Uh, next, we have Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe backstage. Uh, Owens is pumped for tonight. Uh, he said he's had much success in Planet Houston. Mm-hmm. Planet uh, Houston. He won his Intercontinental Championship there. He won the Universal title there. Yeah. He's looking to keep that streak of good things happening in Planet Houston for Kevin Owens. And Joe reiterates, hey, when it comes to Seth, I got your back. Mm-hmm. However, if you get in the way of what I want, my opportunity, I'm going to take you out. Yep. After that fire and desire interview, uh, Sonya says, I'm not going to eliminate Mandy. In fact, if it's down between her and I, I'm going to eliminate myself. Yeah. I'm not going to eliminate my friend. My friend. My friend. And then we get to women's Royal Rumble. Uh, first out, Alexa Bliss. Second out. Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair was MVP of this of this particular Royal Rumble. That was such a welcome and unexpected surprise. A star making performance. She, when she came out, she had on like an amazing uh, black, uh, primarily black outfit, very shiny with gold trim. Mm-hmm. She looked like a million bucks. She carried herself like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. The crowd treated her like that, and uh, and yeah, she got most eliminations. Yep. And they treated her great, man. She was tossing people out left and right. Well, she tied for most eliminations, but uh. Uh, third out, Molly Holly. Fourth, Nikki Cross. Uh, Lana come out fifth. She drops a promo on the way the ring saying she's going to win the Rumble for her uh, new husband, Bob Lashley. Bob Lashley. Uh, who later on it was announced that he and Rusev were not going to be in Royal Rumble after all. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes Martinez, one of the newest signees to NXT, she's in Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. That was great. Yeah. Uh, she clears house. She almost eliminates Lana. Liv Morgan's out at seven. She does eliminate Lana. Yeah. And then uh, uh, later on, or shortly thereafter, while Lana's like, oh, you eliminated me. Damn you, Liv Morgan. Liv's going up top, you know, still in the match trying to win. Yeah. Lana pushes her off. They start brawling ringside. Uh, Mandy, uh, she's in at eight. Candice is next at nine. Uh, uh, between nine and ten, Bianca eliminates uh, Molly Holly. Uh, Alexa uh, eliminates Mandy, but no, she lands on Otis, who's laying ringside. <laughs> and she just rolls on top of him. That was great. She gets back in the ring. Uh, Sonya Deville's in at 10. Her and Mandy eliminate Mercedes Martinez. Uh, Kyrie Sand 11. Mia Yim at 12. Uh, and then uh, Nikki's on the apron. Kyrie was, was really fun. She had her little, uh, what is it called? Parasol. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. So she gets in, she goes to the top, and she does Jack Gallagher or Mary Poppins. Yeah, yeah. She, like, you know, it's open, and she, like, jumps down with it. Then she closes it and, and starts, starts spinning, spinning it. it. Or opens it, starts spinning it, and then closes it. And starts jabbing at him. That's oh, great. that's good. So Mia Yim's at 12. Uh, between 12 and 13, Bianca uh, uses Alexa Bliss to <clears throat> knock Nikki Cross off the apron. She tries to eliminate uh, Alexa next. However, uh, uh, Bliss uses Bianca's hair to avoid elimination. And then Sonya accidentally knocks Mandy off the apron. Otis catches her, but then Bianca uh, sends Sonya out of the ring onto both of them. 
Otis falls over, yeah. Mandy and Sonya are eliminated. Yeah. That's going to be a, a, a point of a, a tension between Well, earlier and they had, during the, I believe the kickoff, they had a little interview. No, it was right before the match. Where, yeah. Oh, did you mention this yeah, one already? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Where Sonya says, I, 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 I'll, I'll eliminate myself before I eliminate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dana Brooks in at 13. Uh, Bianca dumps Candice LeRae out. And then uh, Bliss eliminates Kyrie Sane. Tamina in at 14, 14. She's pretty quickly eliminated by Bianca Belair. Uh, Dakota Kai in at 15. Uh, the next minute, Bliss eliminates Mia Yim. Chelsea Green in at 16. She eliminates Dakota Kai, but then she's been pretty much immediately eliminated by Alexa Bliss. And then uh, Bianca tosses out Dana Brooke. Um, Bianca and Alexa are brawn on the apron. Uh, Alexa pulls on her hair, and then Bel Air just kind of drives her in the ring post, knocks her off the apron. Mm-hmm. Alexa's eliminated. Eight eliminations for Bianca Belair at that point. Charlotte in at 17. Uh, Naomi in at 18. Beth Phoenix in at 19. Hell of a performance from Beth Phoenix. She's oh, been yeah. there for a while with a huge gash in the back of her head. Yeah. It seemed like blood was just pouring out. So how long was Brock in? They said Brock was in for 26? 20, I wrote that down. 26, 23. Okay, so the Drew came out at 16. Yeah. And it went an hour. Where did I see that? An hour. 50 seconds. And 50 seconds. So based on the math, you think he would be in there longer than Brock? Seems like that'd be the case. Yeah. In which case, it was a tie. Well, I wouldn't have. Uh, Tony Storms in at 20. Charlotte eliminates Bianca Belair. Uh, Kelly Kelly in at 21. Sarah Logan at 22. Sarah Logan is basically immediately eliminated by Charlotte. Yeah, pretty much. And then Charlotte tosses Kelly Kelly as well. Yeah. Natalia is in at 23. Her and Beth Phoenix start working together pretty much for the rest of the match. Pretty much. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, Zia Lee at 24. Uh, Zelina Vega at 25. Shotzi Blackheart, another recent NXT signee. Pretty cool. Uh, she's in. Um, Carmella at 27. Uh, Natalia and Beth, they toss Charlotte into the ring post, but she goes to the second rope to the floor, hangs out there for a little bit. Tegan Knox at 28. And then Santina at 29. Oh, this was fine. Why do you heavy side this one? I mean, it could have been a, a spot for... Uh, Someone else. What, one other person just to get tossed out again. There's a really potential storyline they could have advanced instead of this re- was, referring to something that happened 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, no, this I'm fine with this. I mean, they basically, look, I like this in that it was a reminder of how things have changed so much. Santina comes out, which was one of the low points of how they used to treat the women's division. And... He is almost destroyed by uh, Natalia and Beth Phoenix and instead elects to toss himself out. Mm-hmm. I liked it because it was a reference to history. It was a correction. It was a, it it was was a, a reference correction. to things that gone wrong. I understand all that. Yeah. Nonetheless, I'd like to see you into Kirk and Petter in there. Uh, and then the final entrant, Shayna at number 30. She goes after Charlotte. But then in quick- you know what they really should have done? It just had 31 people, and he comes out, and he's not like a legit person, you know, contender. Yeah. Because I know I, I totally understand your point, and I understand that I would much rather see anybody that would benefit from, and that's anybody in NXT or even on Main Roster or whatever, to be in the Rumble. It's a big deal for anybody. Yes. Uh, that being said, I didn't mind the moment. Uh, she goes after Charlotte at first, but then in quick succession, she eliminates. Zia Lee, Tegan Knox, Zelina. Shotzi tries to eliminate her again, like they did, like she did on the NXT Battle Royal. However, Shayna evades that, eliminates her instead. Uh, Naomi, who did a, a, a thing where she's getting eliminated, she jumped on the barricade, hopped up, walked around, jumped on the announce table, and set up a bridge between the the hood and the announce table and the ring steps. Yeah. So she crosses that bridge, gets back. Um, it was a good spot in the ring. It was very impressive when she bounced out of the ring and. Cut onto the barricade, yeah. That could easily have not. Because she had maybe like, I don't know, three to six inches of clearance. I don't see what's going on with AJ Styles. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Beth and Natalia, they team up, hit a heart attack on Shayna. Uh, and then Beth just tosses Natty out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Charlotte, Beth, uh, Shayna, final three. Oh, sorry. Shane eliminates Carmella, Tony, and then Naomi. Shane just went, just went on a rampage. Yeah. Eliminating eight people. Um, so Charlotte, Beth, Shayna, final three. Shayna tosses Beth. She tries to do the same with Charlotte. Charlotte's got her hands on the ropes, uh, like ankles on Shayna's shoulders. So it looks like Shayna's going to just dump her out that way. Instead, it's kind of like a head scissors thing. Charlotte uh, takes Shayna out of the mat, out of the ring. She wins. And afterwards, Charlotte has uh, 
uh, uh, interview, more or less saying, essentially, you're taking me for granted. I'm, I'm here man. to establish, to show you all again that I'm the queen, that I, I, I run this division. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I thought it was good. I thought that, uh, look, Charlotte is a, is a tested, proven main, commodity. A, a proven main eventer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, if she goes after uh, Becky Lynch, I think it makes all the sense in the world. It does. Um, it's the safe choice. That being said, it is a safe choice. It is, it is, and we're gonna get a killer match. I mean, they might be, they might be able to book this. Look, so, uh, apparently, also we found out that Sasha Banks wasn't hasn't, cleared, wasn't yeah. cleared for yeah. this. Um, so uh, they could still somehow write horsewoman, you know, with Bailey's win tonight, uh, the four horsewomen going at it, um, or they could, you know, I mean, there's any number of ways they can go. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if without Ronda Rousey, if we're looking at you know, a main event situation, but, um, I would, I would think would the placement of Brock versus drew indicate where the winner was going to go there. If it was, oh. if it's the main event of the show of WrestleMania is the women's matches, uh, or if uh, Brock and drew is main event, Brock and drew, would that signal drew is going to win the title? I would like to think so. Vince is always like Vince literally dubbed in the chosen one. Yeah. And he's like way better now than he was ten years ago. I know. I just way better. I just have a hard time believing that, like you know, it Vince seeming like for since Roman and and even with Seth, Vince like telegraphed all that stuff. You know that all oh, this is who I want. Mm -hmm. I hope. I hope this is it. I hope Drew takes the title off Brock I hope and so too. People start fighting over that title. Yeah, you know. I know. I know. Uh, next, Baron interview. Just talking about him in the Rumble and other BS. Um, uh, 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 I'm going to toss Roman for Mumble. Uh, uh, next, for the SmackDown, is titled Bailey taking on Lacey Evans. Uh, I was ordering pizza for a chunk of this match, so I missed some of it or kind of caught it in bits and pieces. At one point, Bailey hit the top rope elbow. Uh, Lacey kicked out of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, Bailey goes with the second rope. She does a salute to mock Lacey Evans. Oh, yeah. Uh, goes for like a back elbow off there. Uh, Lacey avoids it. She gets upper hand. Um, there's a spot where like Lacey did like a springboard back elbow thing. Mm -hmm. That was a little weird. And then she does another thing where she launches herself out of the ring to, to land on Bailey. Bailey moves. Um, and then uh, Bailey tosses her into the barricade right in front of her kid. Um, that didn't really even amount to much, though. Yeah, no. The stuff with the kid was really good, though. Um, a corn dog commercial with Lacey Evans. That was really good. That was awesome. That was on during the kickoff show. To me, that was that was. I was like, man, I'm glad I chose Lacey Evans as, as winning the championship tonight because this corn dog commercial, that's championship big, caliber that's corn dog that's commercial. That's there, man. big money right there. So according to Tom Collier about the men's rumble, uh, he says uh, it was a, he McIntyre was a moderately late but very popular choice, and that's why so many changes were made to the announced lineup. Change was apparently fan driven. So apparently I've noticed the fan response and they, that paid off because yeah. the crowd went nuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smart move. If that's, if that's true, uh, Bailey then goes for Bailey to belly actually twice. Lacey escapes both times. She hits a neck breaker on Bailey hits a standing moonsault goes up top, uh, does a salute of her own tries for a moonsault. Bailey gets her knees up and just covers her to get the win. So I guess the idea is, uh, too many uh, histrionics from Lacey Evans with the salute instead of just bang, moonsault, get the win. Yeah. She wasn't focused. She was too busy uh, uh, being role model, so to say, rather than trying to be champion. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, impetus for uh, a rematch here? I mean, I would say no. Oh, that's great. I would say no. It seems pretty definitive. They can write it in however they exactly. want. She can same, she can win a number one contender match. Same same uh, elimination. You can use the same rationale for rematch here. You can for Andrade and Humberto. Yeah, of not course. definitive victory. Yeah. Bailey didn't hit Bailey to Bailey or a rose plant on her. Didn't hit the finish. Therefore, the door is open. Mm -hmm. Next match of the night, probably <laughs> match of the night in my estimation. Daniel Bryan versus the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Banger. This is just a, a banger this is a of a killer match. match. No red lights. No Larson. red lights. No red lights. Yeah. No, no red, red lights. lights. Uh, yeah. So the match. Good stuff. So the fiend just looked like a dude. No man, I thought that he looked great. I thought that they could have 
giving us some like atmosphere. It mild some atmosphere. atmosphere, like a little bit of smoke, maybe. Um, Just bring like the, sta- the, the the house lights down all the way or something. Do the, yeah, I mentioned that during the stream. Do the Sinkara thing. Yeah, do the Sinkara thing. Or what they did for that last hour raw like twice. Mm-hmm. Bring all the house lights down. <laughs> Boy, that was weird. Let's change the graphics for the third hour. And let's bring the house lights down. You know, if they had just stuck with that, maybe it would have been cool. They should have done that for the whole three hours of Raw. Like, let people curse during the third hour. That would have been great. Uh, raw, up all night. Yeah, exactly. Whoops. Uh, so, early on, Bray just powerbombs the hell out of Daniel Bryan. Yeah. It was like a Walter S. powerbomb. Oof. Yeah. Um, and he starts beating him with a strap. And Daniel Bryan's got all these welts forming. By the end of the match, his back looked like hamburger. Mm-hmm. It looked nasty. Yeah. yeah, it looked really bad. Um, and then uh, Daniel Bryan comes to enough. He hits a suicide dive. Fiend kind of catches him and then, you know, like one motion tosses him into the barricade mm-hmm. uh, and then rams him in the ring post and beats him more with the strap. We're back in the ring. Bray hits an Uranagi, snaps Brian's neck, uh, beats Brian with the strap some more, starts showboating to the crowd, does his bent over backward thing in the corner. Um, and then uh, Brian starts his comeback there. Again, not staying focused. Yeah. Losing focus. Yeah, man. Uh, and then he hits a knee plus on him, gets a two. Uh, Fiend, he's sent out of the ring. Uh, Daniel Bryan hits a top rope cross by to ringside. Uh, Bray eventually just sends him into the ring steps. Uh, and then Bryan then grabs a strap and pulls Fiend into the ring post and then do, does that four times. Follows with a knee off the apron. Fiend just gets up, no cells, mm-hmm. drops Daniel Bryan with the lariat. Uh, Bray sets Bryan on the announce table, uh, lay, you know, supine, prone. And then Daniel Bryan. Starts kicking Bray square in the front area. Yeah, man. Weakness. Yeah. Balls. Mm. Not. No. That's not the case. He thought it might be, but it's not. Well, I mean, it was enough of weakness to allow him to DDT him on the announce table. Yeah, but he gets back up. And then he starts beating up Bray with a strap. Mm -hmm. Back in the ring, Daniel Bryan hits a missile drop kick. Then some yes kicks with some shots with the strap mixed in. Yeah. That was great. Uh, Bray no sells. Daniel Bryan grabs that strap. Smacks Bray right in the face with it. That's great. And it's two nights in a row. We got uh, shots to the face. Yeah. Trent, Trent. Chopping, chomping in the face. And then this, strap right to the face. And he gets some Danielson stomps. He goes for a knee plus. Fiend catches it. And in one motion, hits a sister Abigail. That was rad. Gets a two. The sell from, from Brian. Oh, it was, was fantastic. Great. So Dan and Brian goes up the top rope. Uh, Bray locks in the mandible claw. Uh, and then Bray, or sorry, Brian drops down, puts Bray in a triangle. To kind of loosen the grip a little bit, Bray and uh, Bray kind of brings him down to the ground, and then Brian reverses the mandible claw into a yes lock with the strap through the mouth. That was great visual, just great stuff. Yeah. Uh, Fiend powers out, ground and pound for Daniel Bryan. Tries for assist for Abigail. Brian reverses into a roll up. Bray kicks out. Brian hits a knee plus. Bray kicks out of that at two, uh, and there's a great shot of Brian. Like trying to will himself up in the foreground. In the background, total horror movie villain thing. Whoop! Yeah, he just pops right Bray up. Bray just pops right up. I asked him before this, man. I really think that they have a shot here with the Fiend <coughs> to do what they were going to do with Bray Wyatt mm-hmm. before he was the Fiend and make him another Undertaker. Yeah. And I think they have a really good shot if they keep the Fiend strong. Yeah. Keep him strong and keep adding dimension. So Brian gets up, starts wailing away on the Fiend with the strap. Bray is completely no selling, locks in the mandible claw, and then pretty much gives him a mandible claw Uranagi yeah. for the win. It was rad. It was awesome. It was really cool. So lights go down, lights come up, Fiend's gone. So Dan and Brian rolls over, back is all hamburger. You get trainers, you get refs coming down to the ring. They kind of help him out. Out. Uh, he starts walking down the ramp. He collapses. Um, and he, as he's getting back up, he's like, get away from me. Yeah. I want to walk back myself. I want to see him go crazy. No, that's what I want to see. American Dragon. He starts like watching that tape over and over again, looking for anything. He tries to mm-hmm. tell Roman. Because mm-hmm. um, I still think it's probably going to be Roman versus Fiend of Mania. Probably. Um, they'll probably do an Elimination Chamber number one contender match. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love the bit where uh, they should really give that match to Kofi, though. That'd be great. Yeah, it would Kofi, be. Kofi can lose at Mania. Um, I really love that last bit right before the like the like basically the finish of the match. Where Daniel Bryan starts wailing away with the strap and Bray no sells as if he's been toying with him the entire time. Mm-hmm. As if the entire match, him selling for Daniel Bryan, has been one big, let me get your hopes up for this last moment where I'm just gonna completely annihilate you. Yeah. It's like here, I'm gonna I'm gonna dangle this carrot in front of you, give you hope that you can yeah. win in the end. You, at that when you think you're on the verge of victory. Eh, eh. Wrong. 
Wrong. Man. Next, Asuka versus Becky Lynch for Raw Women's Championship. Really good match. Uh, 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 Asuka's aim with missed. Not true today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so early on, Asuka uh, catches Becky's baseball slide, kicks her arm, uh, tries her hip attack. Becky evades that, locks in disarmor on the ropes. Missile drop kick gets it too. So uh, Asuka was trying to work the arm, soften her up for Asuka lock. Uh, Becky, in turn, was trying to uh, uh, get Oscar prone enough to lock in Disarmor. Mm-hmm. That cost- mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great gift there. I know, isn't it? Uh, great back and forth. Um, at one point, towards the end, Oscar is hitting some quad kicks to Becky's head, and she really uh, lays in a stiff last one. Yeah. And they, do, they do a concussion spot, kind of. Yeah, no, they do. They kayfabed it. They took my advice. Uh, it, it, it was. It was eerily reminiscent of what we saw like legitimately with Alexander Wolf last night. And uh, thankfully, in this case, uh, when they did the replay, you can see clearly her kick, it hits it hits her elbow. Right it right. hits the elbow. It didn't it didn't connect. Um, and then the ref was about to wave off the match, and then Becky grabs him on the leg and says, "No, don't you yeah. dare." Yeah, it's good good bit. Yeah, uh, and we get more kicks from Oscar, and Becky's kind of no sell until the final one, which is right in the head. Uh, only gets Oscar a two count. Uh, Oscar goes for an Oscar lock. Be- Becky escapes that. Tries for a disarmor. Oscar escapes that. Becky hits a scorpion death drop, gets a two. Uh, this, this spot was great. So Oscar pushes Becky into the ref in the corner, mm-hmm. but it wasn't a ref bump. Right. And so Becky turns around. Oscar's trying to get the mist right then and there. She's not expecting Becky to kick her in the head. Yeah. So Becky kicks her. Oscar sells it, miss upward, yeah. falls into her own face. Yeah. Uh, uh, Becky locks in disarmor for the win. Yeah. So in this case, mist backfires. On Oscar, really fun match though. It was a really terrific match. Uh, yeah, I thought that it was really, really good. Like we figured this would be the outcome, um, and uh, I just, I really hope that uh, they continue. They build off this for Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, she should be dominant again mm-hmm. until she is, you know, going to challenge for the title yeah, again. Because this was this was toe to toe. It was this whole thing. It totally was just was. A, a simple thing where the the mist, which had worked so well for Oscar, yeah, the last few months just backfired on her this time. Yeah, and if not for Becky kicking her, Oscar could have won. Mm-hmm. It was a perfect opportunity. Russ back was turned, didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, next Street Profits uh, promo, they're just hyping up the Rumble. They should be doing more than this. They're really good. Yeah. They should be doing way more than this. Yep. More interesting stuff. Yeah. More uh, substantive stuff. Seven years in developmental, and Angela Dawkins has to. Could you not see? That would be so disheartening. You know, it's like, oh man, I spent seven years, and I finally got here. And they had like a real organic, oh. you know, following in NXT. I know. I mean, they they were they were on the the house show loop in Florida, developing their chemistry. Yeah, they developed on NXT main roster, if you will, into a really good tag team. Yeah. And they're brought up to do this crap. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're be- they 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 should be doing more more more, more substantive stuff than this. I agree. They I should agree. be wrestling. They should be in real feuds. Uh, they should be contending for the tag titles. Yep. Booker T was on commentary for Hell the men's yes. rumble. That was should rad. have been the match. Should have been the match. I agree. It's in his hometown. Let it be in the match. Take out MVP. Put Booker T in. Have him keep him mic'd up. Yeah. Commentate yeah. while he's in the rumble. Totally. Exactly. That being said, Booker T is a treasure. He's great on commentary. Had me laughing at least three times. Yep. He's fantastic. Uh, commentary mentions, I mentioned this earlier, that Rusev and Lashley, I didn't catch the reason why, but they were out of Rumble. So more spots opened up. Looks like those spots went to the OC because they weren't announced in advance. Ah. Well, they were the only ones who, like, Tucker wasn't in it. Yeah. There were. Uh, Otis wasn't in it. Otis wasn't in it. So Edge took one of those spots. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Edge was in the Rumble. He yeah. didn't come back. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. So he's a liar. That was unexpected. <laughs> he's a wrestler, man. He's a wrestler. All right. So they do in this business. Now the next time a wrestler says something, Larson, are you gonna are you gonna take him at their word? Probably. Not the kind of person I am. Should not. Uh, we all knew Brock was in number one. He announced it. Uh, Elias was in at number two. He had a promo, and then he's about to sing a song called "Sacrificial Lamb." Mm-hmm. I think he thought Brock was going to be said lamb. Yeah. Uh, he should have known better. That uh, he was going to be said lamb. Yeah. He gets in the ring. Oh, sorry. No, Lesnar goes out to the ramp, lays into Elias, tosses him around the ring a little bit, breaks Elias' guitar over his back, tosses him out. First elimination. First of 13 for yeah. Brock. Yeah. Rowan in next. 
Uh, he's eliminated in eight seconds. That's the one they've updated the time of on Wikipedia. Eight seconds. Yeah, they 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 update the on the women's side of things. They updated all the short ones. The short ones. Uh, Rowan's out in eight seconds. Next, Bob Root in. Uh, he's F five pretty quickly. He's tossed. John Morrison in. Uh, he gets like two shots in on Brock, and then Brock belly to bellies him over the top rope out of the ring. Uh, Kofi in at six. He's the first one to last a full minute till the next entrant is in. Yeah. Uh, Ray is in at number seven. Uh, they're Batman, fighting. Batman Ray. Yeah, it was great. Uh, they're trying to take it to Brock. Uh, he, uh, German suplexes, both of them, and they roll out of the ring. Big E's in at eight. He goes down to Ray. He goes to Kofi. He's like, hey, three of us, let's take Brock let's out. Let's get him. Let's get take him. Brock out. Yeah. So they're in there. Kofi gets trouble on Paradise. Big E lifts up Brock effortlessly. Yeah, it was awesome. For a big ending. Yeah. Ray hits a 619. Uh, and then Ray charges towards Brock. Brock tosses him. Yeah. And then uh, he clotheslines Big E out, and then he F5s Kofi out. Yeah. I mean, that means I have to quit the show because I said that on Twitter. Yeah. If Kofi doesn't eliminate Brock, I would quit the show. Well, this is our last show together, so. Yep. And then you, at the end of this show, you said you quit also. I'm just kind of tired of your stuff. So we're both done. So I guess it's perfect time for it to call it quits. <laughs> uh, Cesaro's in at nine. Brock eliminates him quickly. This part was kind of cool. Shelton's in at 10. Uh, Paul Heyman go, comes over, gives him a nice hug, mm-hmm. and it says, uh, happy that you, you're reuniting with Brock. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in the ring. He and Brock hug. Looks like they're going to team up. Yeah, they start chatting it up. They're like, hey, yeah, you and me, we'll take them on together. And so uh, Shelton's in the foreground. Bad idea. Brock's in the background. They're ready for the next person to come in. Yeah, Brock, German suplexes them and toss them out of the ring. Yeah. That's nine eliminations for Brock. Yeah. Nakamura in at 11. Uh, he gets like a single leg drop kick in, goes for a Kinshasa. Brock picks him up, dumps him out of the ring. Ten eliminations. MVP in at 12. Uh, I think Brock sells like two shots from him. He eats F5. He's tossed. Things get interesting at number 13. Keith Lee. Brock Lesnar. This was his look on his face. Whoa. And he keeps on going, big fella. Big boy. Look at this guy. Look at you. Hey, you're a big guy. Uh, Really just put over Keith Lee. Big time. Mm -hmm. Sold for him. Uh, I was speculating, knowing that Keith Lee is tied with Matt Riddle, knowing they're both from NXT. Keith Lee doesn't run his mouth the way Matt Riddle does. Brock, I swear to God, wouldn't surprise me if he was using his uh, interaction with Keith Lee as an example to spite Matt Riddle. Or, I'll put this out there, something pro wrestling sheet report is true. Maybe it was supposed to be uh, Matthew Riddle's slay to come in at 13. That could be. And then that have be. that moment with Brock, and Brock's like, uh-uh. Yeah. And so they, whoop, swapped. That could have been the thing. Riddle like, and hey, Lee. You don't do that around here, because watch what I'm about to do. And then he swapped him. That wasn't because Riddle, I mean, Brock basically books Brock. That's yeah. what we've come to understand yeah. anyways. That wouldn't surprise me at all. So uh, Keith Lee's taking it to Brock. A uh, uh, couple splash in the corner, even while Brock is selling. He's selling for Keith Lee. Yeah. There's a look of like, wow, mm-hmm. this guy's something else. Yeah. Uh, we get a double clothesline spot. They're both selling. Uh, Braun comes in at 14. Haas battle. Yeah, all the beef in the ring. Yeah. Uh, he goes after Brock and Keith Lee. We see a uh, 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 Braun drop kick, something we don't see a whole lot. Yeah. But it's impressive to see. Uh, he kicks uh, Lee under the bottom rope, uh, goes to ringside, shoulder tackles him, gets back in, clotheslines Brock, uh, picks him up for a power slam. Uh, instead, Brock escapes that. Uh, Gives him a German suplex. Keith Lee gets one. Uh, eventually, Brock's taken out. Lee and Braun turn their attention toward each other, rather than keeping it on Brock. And then he eliminates both of them. That's 13 eliminations. Yep. Ricochet's in next. He uh, st- is, is in there for a minute. 16, Drew McIntyre. So uh, Brock's uh, reaction to Drew is roughly is kind of the same as Keith Lee. Not mm-hmm. to the same degree, but close. Yeah. He's like, oh, all right, more yeah. beef. Yeah. Takes his gloves off. And so he's getting ready. Ricochet's behind him. Kicks him in the balls. Claymore from Drew. Out goes Brock. The timing was so great. Oh, it was great. Drew is so awesome. The low blow happens, and you could see the look. So, like, I would imagine some people who maybe aren't as experienced or don't take their job as seriously might proceed with that kick as if they knew ahead of time what was going to happen because they all know ahead of time what's going to happen. Drew reacted to the low blow like, oh, my God, I can't believe I have this opportunity now. There's that second of hesitation like, is this really happening? I have yeah. this opportunity. Yeah. Runs at him, kicks at him, or kicks his head off. 
And Lesnar goes flying out of the ring. And, we mark out and big And Brock time. did a great job selling he that Claymore. Terrific. Yeah. He was on that mat for a minute, roughly. For ages, yeah. And while he's hovering ringside for a while, and as Drew's, you know, tossing people, dominating the match, Brock's just staring at him. He mm-hmm. goes around to the barricade by the timekeeper area and starts talking to him. And yeah. saying, we're not done yet. We're not done, yeah. In fact, they're not. Yeah. So uh, I mean, that could, that could also, I'm going to cut you off again. Uh, that could mean also that, uh, well, I mean, so obviously Paul Heyman is, is the executive director of Raw. Everything runs through Vince, though. Um, but, I mean, obviously, you know, this maybe is a guy that Brock is, is, is looking forward to working with. Mm-hmm. The way he sold for him, you can always mm-hmm. sort of get a little feel for that. And uh, by all indications, uh, Heyman is a, is a is a Drew fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, uh, Brock, if he sees money in a feud, mm-hmm. he'll do whatever. Yeah, we've sure. seen that before. Sure. So shortly after uh, Drew eliminates Brock, he tosses Ricochet out. Miz is in at seventeen. He eats a Claymore. He's eliminated by Drew. AJ's in at eighteen. Uh, he w- he's in there for the minute. Dolphin at 19. Of course, he and Drew have history. Mm-hmm. I believe it was Dolphin when they drew from the Rumble last year. Mm-hmm. Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson. Is in at 20. With a merch shirt. Yeah. He's like, house show Carl Anderson. House show. Everybody's teaming in on Drew, teaming up on Drew, sorry, until AJ, for some reason, turns his attention to Dolph. Yeah. Didn't make a lot of sense. They get bored easily. Uh, <laughs> number 21, you think you know me. I was pretty shocked. Edge. I was pretty shocked about this. Um, I think my pop was a little bit less than because people were ahead of us on the no, chat. No, spoiling it on the... <laughs> and so it got spoiled for me by a couple seconds. But I was, internally, I was very shocked. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I always say this. I always say, oh, they're not going to have a big return at the Rumble. I know there's been plenty of big returns at the Rumble. Not everybody can win. And they always find clever ways of getting people who mm-hmm. are, you know, a big deal out in a way that's, you know, it maintains their dignity, if you will. Yes. Um, protects them. Protects them, Yeah. And they did that really, really well with uh, with Edge. Mm-hmm. I felt, um, but yeah, I was uh, I was shocked. I figured he would come back because everything has been rumored about. I would believe all that over him. But the Rumble did kind of surprise me a little bit, mm-hmm. actually quite a bit, uh, because I figured if they were going to have him come back, it'd be like it Raw or something like that. Yeah, and set up a Mania match. They would set up the Mania thing yeah. or a Crown Royal match. So Edge is in. He spears everybody, save for AJ. They have a nice stare down. We get a dream match happening, and then Edge spears AJ. AJ sells the hell out of it and probably hurt himself in the process. Well, AJ did the flip thing with the sell, but it did look like when I saw it in the moment, it looked like his arm went under him in a really awkward way. Yeah. And and then like he was holding it here, and at one point, Baron comes over to him, and AJ, I think, tells him, you know, F off because my arm. Well, there's trainers hurt. talking to him ringside yeah. before that. Yeah, Baron comes over to him and, and AJ's like, "No, go away." And then AJ walks through the edge, who's in the corner. Uh, must have told him, "Hey, toss me." Edge tosses him, and AJ's out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if there's supposed to be more of a sequence between those two in particular, and AJ, like a professional, was trying to stick to the plan, um, or if he was. I don't. I don't know what the situation yeah, was. If he either. was the closest at that time, and he realized. Maybe he told Baron, hey, go away while I see if I can still go. Yeah, let me see if I can pop this in. And then when he realized he couldn't, it was, hey, Edge, you're closest. Let's yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, yeah, Baron's in at 22. Uh, mentioned uh, Edge tosses AJ out. Matt Riddle's in at 23. Riddle. He has a nice little sequence with Edge, gives him a V trigger, and then uh, Corbin, trying to get that heel heat, tosses him. Matt Riddle was not in the match very long. <laughs> They gave him the Walter Survivor Series. Yeah, treatment. they did. Matt Riddle yeah. really didn't have that good of a showing in the Survivor Series either. No, he didn't. Uh, Luke Gallows, Doc Gallows, in at 24. Uh, between 24 and 25, Drew eliminates Corbin. Uh, Randall Orton in, in at 25. He RKO's Gallows and Anderson. You get a cool moment between him and Edge. They eliminate uh, the, the OC together, um, and then they start teaming up for a spell. Uh, Roman in at 26. He spears, he eliminates Dolph, uh, and then uh, Drew comes over and chops him in mm-hmm. the corner. And Roman, because he's got that thick-ass vest on, no-sells it. That, this is the first time he's actually, they kayfabe the vest, man. Like, that, it's thick. Yeah. You're not going to feel it. I know. Uh, Owen's in at 27. He clears out. He hits a pop-up powerbomb on Drew, stunner on Roman. Orton's lurking in the background, goes for an RKO. Nope. Owen's avoids that. Uh, gets uh, gives a stunner to Orton. Alistair Black down at twenty eight. 
Drew goes for a claymore, but instead he eats a perfectly timed black mask. Yeah, man, it was great. Uh, Joe's in at 29. Him and Kevin Owens get in the middle of the ring. They throw hands. And then Seth is in at 30. He's joined out there by Buddy Murphy and AOP. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe and Owens go ringside to brawl with them. Um, and then uh, over the span of, like, I don't know, 45 seconds, Seth and his faction takes out everybody. He's in the ring. He stomps Drew. Get a showdown with Roman. He eventually stomps him. And then Alistair gets involved while he's trying to pick him up and toss him out. Uh, Seth, though, eliminates Alistair Blacks. Looks like Alistair's getting involved in this main event or this A story. Yeah. Or the Seth story on Raw. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, and then Owens stuns Rollins, tosses him for the ring. AOP's there to catch him. They put him back in. And then Rollins and AOP pull Owens out of the ring. Uh, and then, so Edge, Seth, I don't have Rollins, Seth Rollins. Edge, Seth, Reigns, Drew, in the final, wait, Orton. Orton. Edge, Seth, Orton, Reigns, Drew, or the final five. Uh, and everybody's kind of circling Seth. And Seth's like, I can't trust Roman. Yeah. Tries to recruit Roman. He's like, here, fist, shield buddies. Uh, let's team up now. We'll be the final two and work it out then. Roman's like, sure, chum. Puh. And then Superman punches Superman him. punch. Claymore from Drew. Uh, he tosses Seth. Uh, Randy and Edge, they team up for a bit longer against Roman and Drew. Uh, Orton RKO's Drew. Edge follows with a spear. They hit a double RKO on Drew. And Orton's lurking in the background. Edge. Edge turns around. Orton, Orton's like, uh, yeah. you know, what you, uh, kind of, you know, yeah, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. And then Edge grabs him by the head and tosses him. Yeah. And then this part was great because they're John back and forth. Edge is basically saying, what do you think? I'm stupid. I get you. I swerve you. You don't swerve me. And then Orton goes, ah. <laughs> the microphone picked it that up was perfectly. Great. So we get a showdown between uh, Spearmaster Edge and Spearmaster Roman. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get a, a spear at the spear. same time. No double spear. I don't know how that would work. Yeah. You know the, 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 the videos you've seen of, of Rams fighting? <laughs> They're always in slow motion. Rams fighting? That's yeah. what it'd be. Uh, so Superman punch from Roman. He goes for a spear. Edge avoids that. He hits a spear of his own. He tries to toss Roman out. Roman stays in the apron. He pulls Edge in the apron with him. They're brawling in there. Uh, Edge is grabbing the ropes to stay in. Uh, Roman, like, limb by limb, knocks him off. Mm -hmm. um, and Roman's just hanging out on the apron. And we're like, Drew! Yeah. Claymore! Just Claymore him then! Claymore now! Instead... He, like, tries a weak-ass punch. Yeah, I know. And Roman easily, like, no Gets sells back it. in the ring. So, uh, eventually, though, Roman goes for a spear. Uh, Drew avoids that. Hits him with a claymore and then tosses him. Mm -hmm. Drew is your Royal Rumble winner 2020. Great moment. So happy for Drew. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. No, it's it's fantastic. It's, man. And his, his pointing at the WrestleMania sign seems so genuine mm -hmm. it seems so absolutely why is this lately okay cool um it was so genuine it was really it was just good pure emotion yeah man. it really was and you could tell towards the end there he was he was becoming overwhelmed yeah by the moment because it was probably you know five years ago ever it was dude was released mm -hmm. had to go out and kind of recreate himself as a pro wrestler yeah um and now he's on the verge of main eventing wrestlemania potentially yeah it's pretty neat no, it's great, man. It's really great, and everybody on to all the wrestlers on Twitter are uh, are just blowing it up. Saying, mm -hmm. You know, this guy deserves it. Mm -hmm. He's he's a great guy. He fan. put in the work, man. Yeah, he put in the work, and he just seems like a super genuine, down to earth guy. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, there's lots of like news coming out of the Rumble though. But we're gonna we're gonna hell look at that Beth Phoenix head. So much right blood. There. So uh, we'll talk about that on a news brief tomorrow. Yep. So that'll be good. Seeing if there's anything, uh, if we ever got confirmation on on who the Iron Man was. We'll probably have to wait till tomorrow. I guess so. Let's see here. Royal Rumble 2020 Iron Man. No. Nothing. Nothing. You would think it would just say. Nothing. But it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. We do appreciate it. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.